Today on the channel from Jazzwares, AEW Unrivaled Series 5. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel as we start a week of AEW Unrivaled Series 5 reviews on the channel, and you guys know where I'm starting. I'm starting with Luchasaurus. You heard me at the soft open, masked figure, big figure, face painted figure. You guys know that checks all my boxes, all my boxes. It's one of the sayings on the channel, gotta get a deal, turtle anxiety, see you later, and then the big and the masked and the face painted. You guys know I love this stuff. And this is exactly what I love in a wrestling figure. Toyetic to the 10th degree. I see a little kid walking down the aisle. He sees something like this, doesn't even know what wrestling is. Guess what? He's going to want to buy this. And I was no different. I'm no different now than I was then. And I think a lot of kids are in the same boat. So you knew I was unboxing this one first. Uh, there's no way I'm passing up Luchasaurus. Probably one of the most exciting figures uh, to come this year that we at least know of that I was uh, anticipating. So very excited to open this one up. As you guys know, I got it at Ringside Collectibles, ringsidecollectibles.com. Use discount code KYLE, save yourself 10%. But we're going to do this like we normally do it. We're going to take a look at the packaging, talk about it, unbox it, talk about it, and see where it goes from there. So let's take a look at the packaging on good old Luchasaurus. All right, by now we're familiar with this AEW packaging. We're five series in. Can you believe that? Series six is right around the corner, but we're five series in. We got Luchasaurus finally. Finally, we're getting what I'm wanting here. Uh, but very similar. We've seen the packaging before. Like I said, very classic superstars in inspired. So very cool uh, looking through these, and you guys know how it goes by now. So there he is on the front. I don't see any paint application issues right off the front, so I like that a whole lot. Got the nice glamour shot down here below. Uh, Unrival collection, of course. Luchasaurus. Uh, you guys name right there on the side in the gold font, gold foil lettering, I believe it's called. There's AEW. You guys picture there. What number is he? Number 41 in Series 5. That just doesn't seem possible, but here we are. Number 45 is Luchasaurus. All Elite Wrestling on the other side, of course. And then the back. That's where the magic happens, on the back. Look at that big glamour shot up top there. It's, I guess it's not really a glamour shot. It's, it's like he went to glamour shots. It's not a figure glamour shot, but picture of him what he's looking like there and then you got the whole lineup down below to me i don't know do you what do you guys do you tell me in the comments i would rather see pictures of the figures than actual pictures of the people maybe that's just me but that's how they've been doing it and i guess they're gonna stick to it uh so you got the rest of uh, series five down below there and then the big picture of luchasaurus what's it say here says uh, Luchasaurus, that's his autograph. That's kind of a cool feature. We've seen that before as well. From Double or Nothing, 525, 2019, Las Vegas, Nevada. And yeah, you got John Max Moxley, Scorpio Sky, Frankie Kazarian, Adam Page, Luchasaurus, and Jungle Boy. That's the whole set. As you guys know, we'll unbox the whole thing. Uh, we'll talk about it. And then at the very end of the week, I'll put a video together. I'll put all those for the people that like to watch them together. And then at the very end, I'm going to rank them in order of favorite to least favorite. I don't know. I, I got to think this will be my favorite, but you never know. Stranger things may happen. Uh, so I'm taking a little look at, look, see at Luchasaurus on the back here. Everything checks out. This thing is just next level, but we'll see what level it takes to as we got to unbox it. So let's jump in. Let's see what's going. Let's see what's doing here. Pulling it open like an absolute maniac, just ripping them apart. As you guys know, I got a uh, mint on card set of these as well. Uh, see you later. There it is. There it is. We're getting there. All right, there it is, Luchasaurus out the back. There's that yellow flame background. We've seen it in the past. See you later, and see you later up high. All right, let's soak it in, drink it in, the Luchasaurus. Big tattoo work on here. I didn't mention that earlier. You guys know I love that big tattoo work as well. Very, very solid. So here he is in the old plastic prison. First impression, I like it. I like what I see, first impression. He comes with two extra hands, as you can see there as well. I think that's all right. I like that he has the two open hands on him. Very Jurassic-esque. Very uh, dinosaur-esque, I guess. I don't know what that means, but see you later. All right, well, we got the plastic around his waist. We're used to this with Jazzwear. They uh, really protect their figures with some of these plastic. We saw Orange Cassie with plastic over his head. We're seeing this right here. Pulling this all out. There it is. Got his little plastic diaper off is what it seems like. All right, where do we got? So first... First is the worst. The first thing I notice, the first thing as I pull it out, they have not fixed those elbow joint issues. Uh, we'll see the rest of the figures along the way. I was a the, my really only gripe was series four, and it looks like it has continued to series five. Is that elbow joint? I could see little kids playing with this and breaking these arms off just like that, very easily. 
Very wobbly. There's not a, You can't put much pressure on this elbow joint. It'll break right off. Both of them are that way. So that's... Uh, they gotta fix that. They gotta somehow tighten that. That's the only flaw I feel with the design of these figures so far. I love the joint movements on these. All the articulation is as usual. You know, you got the ankles, you got the knees, you got the thigh cut, you got the th hip swivel, you got the waist, you got the ab little crunch there. Uh, hands, of course, removable hands. You got your elbows, you got your bicep swivel, you got your shoulders, and then of course the head moves around. But let's take that out. So that is the negative right off the top, and that has not changed. And I, I am expecting to see that in the rest of the series. Luckily, I'm not a hardcore player with my toys, I guess we'd say. I'm not a little kid playing with these, but there's got to be a lot of upset kids if there's kids out there that have these that are breaking these off. I, I got to believe that is happening. He doesn't come with soft goods, but he does come with a non-removable belt, kind of his loincloth, I guess we'd call it. Uh, that is on there. It is movable around, but it is not removable as far as taking it off unless you you know, pull the torso off and all that, which, as you guys remember with these AEW figures, you can pop the arms off and, and do some changing. Very similar to He-Man Origins and stuff like that. These are really customizer-friendly uh, at the end of the day. But let's talk Luchasaurus here. We got that out of the way. This head sculpt is next level. This is one of the best head sculpts I've seen in a wrestling figure in a heck of a long time. I love that they got his tongue out. I love that they got the, the goatee beard down there. Of course, the mask with the horns on it. You got the green, bright green uh, braid in the hair that really pops out. Very, very, very cool. Very solid. Uh, mask is not removable, as you can imagine. As we haven't seen Luchasaurus without a mask. I'm sure one day he'll do the whole cane thing where he demasks years from now. Uh, I'm sure we'll see it. It always seems to happen. But man, is this thing cool. And it's a big figure. You guys know I love big figures. That's what I love about this. He's big. He's masked. He's tattooed. The face paint is next level. I love the gold down here. But then you got the uh, almost a snake-like pattern. Almost reminds me of Jake the Snake uh, tights back in the day. Maybe that uh, King of the Ring match with Austin. Didn't he have similar kind of a pattern to his pants? Uh, that's kind of what's going on here. We got the dragon tattoo. I believe it's a dragon. Flowers dragon. I always thought it was a dragon, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's just floral. I guess it is just floral. Like trees and branches and stuff. But it wraps all the way around his body. Just next level paint job. This paint job cannot be easy to do. Uh, I totally get that. And then he's got the arm gauntlets that are tied up. You got that. Man, this is solid. So another thing, I guess I didn't realize this in the prototype pictures. Maybe I missed it, but he does not have shoes on. So he's got the bare feet, uh, a lot like, uh, I believe it was Ortiz. Wasn't it Ortiz last ser series that had that? You got the knee pads on him as well. I guess I thought that was molded. That is a separate piece, his knee pads here. And then you got molded in. The, the tassels are molded in. They're not soft goods. They could have went soft goods with that, but they didn't. I don't mind the mold here. I think that works all right for me. Uh, but yeah, bare feet and then painted black. And then you've got the bottom black here. And then the, the wrap around from his uh, shin guards, wraps, feet wraps uh, going over there. So that's good attention to detail. It would look really weird if this was all black on the foot. So they wrap the gold around. So that's, that's a lot of attention to detail here on this big figure. Uh, I love it. Let's put it, just for the heck of it, I have it sitting on my desk here. Uh, how about Great Kali? One of the giants of wrestling. But here is Great Kali's basic figure. And then we'll put that next to Luchasaurus. Scale's pretty good. I mean, what's great Kali? Seven foot four. Is Luchasaurus six eight? Is that right? So I mean it's close enough. I mean, I'm glad Luchasaurus isn't taller than Great Kali. Obviously, this is a Mattel product, this is a Jazzwares product. Uh, but side by side, you get a little bit of a comparison here. Uh, so that is pretty cool. Uh, I'm glad that scale's okay, because I guarantee there's a lot of people out there that are mixing the AEW figures in with their Mattel Elites, and maybe even their Super 7 figures, stuff like that. So a little smoke and mirrors going on. Nothing wrong with that as a collector. I totally can get behind that. But like I said, guys, this is solid. I don't know why you wouldn't pick this one up. This is a must-have. It could be the most must-have figure in the AEW Jazzwares line to this point, at least for me. That's me talking. I'm sure there's people that agree with me. I'm sure there's people that don't. But my opinion, you can't go wrong with this figure. Uh, I'm glad I got one MOC. I do have the Jurassic Express 2-pack from ringside coming as well. So I'm going to be swimming in some Luchasauruses. But give me Luchasaurus all day long. I would love to see more color out of him. If he could change his mask color up, stuff like that. I mean, this could be the modern-day Ultimate Warrior as far as uh, mask, face paint, all that kind of stuff going. Uh, there doesn't get much more toyetic than this Luchas Luchasaurus figure. And you'll see some of the other ones in Series 5. Jungle Boy, you got to have him to go with this. But Jungle Boy is a very plain figure. So we got some yin and yang in the line. But I don't think you'll get more colorful, more design. 
uh, a better figure in Series 5 than this one. That's my first impression without even opening these other ones. So that's how excited I am for this one. So it looks very solid. We still don't have AEW Jazzware stands. I know I get questions about that a lot. Do you have stands that fit? As you guys know, ringside collectible stands. My favorite stands, the peg hole is just not big enough. So we're still in that. That'll affect all the other figures. So we won't get to do the ringside collectible stand test here. But man, is this next level. This is a must-have figure, guys. I think this one will be flying off the shelves, like I said. I think you'll be collecting... People that collect Jurassic Park stuff might even pick this up. This could very well cross over to a lot of different categories of toy collectors out there. Just how cool it looks with the face paint and everything else. So there you have it. Luchasaurus finally in the house. Definitely going to be a top contender in the AEW top 10 figures of the year for me. There's no question. There's no question this will be in the top 10 list for me. Uh, so I'm very excited to own this, like I've said repeatedly in this video. I recommend you go to ringside as well. If you can, use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10%. So there it is, my boy, Luchasaurus. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel as we continue our unboxings of AEW Unrivaled Series 5 from Jazzwares, and today we've got Jungle Boy, one half of the Jurassic Express. If you missed Luchasaurus's unboxing yesterday, go back and check that video out, and then uh, check this one out. Don't miss either of them, as you got to have both of those in your collection. you got to complete the tag team. One doesn't work without the other, if you ask me. So I'm excited to open this one up. Uh, not quite as toyetic, I think we can all agree, not quite as toyetic and, and eye-appealing of a figure as Luchasaurus was yesterday, but still, I think he holds a place in people's hearts. I think there's a few people out there that maybe Jungle Boy stole their heart and never let go. And we all know uh, Jungle Boy is the son of uh, Luke Perry, which is really crazy after all these years. And a lot of people don't even know who Luke Perry is these days. Uh, it was more of a 90s thing if you were around in the 90s. But, uh, you know, unfortunately he did pass away. But his legacy lives on in the AEW ring with Jungle Boy and the rest of the Jurassic Express. So we're going to do it like we normally do it. We're going to take a look at the packaging, talk about it, unbox it, and talk about it. As you guys know, pick these up at ringsidecollectibles.com. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10%. But there it is. Familiar packaging. We know it. We love it at this point. Uh, always chances for damages on you know, these pictures, though. These pictures on these figures, though. Very tough, very classic Superstars-esque in the packaging, which I definitely love and appreciate. But if you guys were in the thick of it, if you were out in the hunt on uh, classic Superstars back in the day, especially as a mint on card collector as I was, very, very difficult to find perfect mint cards. You don't know how many cases I cracked open back in the day where the, the star on the front was flattened and messed up. I said, oh, I need all these figures, but I'm going to pass because I need a mint on card. Uh, I'd pick up Lucy damaged ones every once in a while, but it was tough. And this is a little tough, too, as this top part does get bent down in the cases, I've noticed. Um, luckily, there is no star with the Classic Superstars type era. That was, like I said, very dangerous and very hard to find men on card uh, samples a lot of the time. But we got a little of those issues here, and you got a lot of corners and spots that can get dented. Uh, it's a beautiful packaging, but it's tough for men on card collectors. But there you got Jungle Boy down below. We love those little glamour shots. You got the AEW Unrivaled down here. AEW up top. What was that? A little number 42, Series 5. Luchasaurus number 41. So I know a lot of people display their figures this way, book-like. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I understand why people do that. Is space is at a premium, especially if you're a man on card collector. I always talk about it. At heart, I'd be a man on card guy, but where would you find all the space for that? It's very difficult. So I understand having to put things sideways, and I think most people would prefer to display this way. But, you know, space can be an issue if you got a lot of figures. But there he is. You got a nice glamour shot down there, number 42, as we said, AEW right there. And then you got all elite wrestling on the side. And now let's look at the back. That's where the magic happens on the back. So there he is with old Ray Phoenix on the back. You got his autograph. You got the rest of AEW Unrivaled Series 5 down below. This is from 10-16-2019 Dynamite Philadelphia, PA. So he doesn't match Luchasaurus, unfortunately. But like I've said in the channel before, I'm not a huge outfit stickler. I know there's some people that say, oh, it's not accurate and stuff. That doesn't work me up as much as others out there. I guess I'm more at the bottom half of that. I'd like it to be accurate, but I'm not one that uh, pays that close of attention to say, oh, wait, those, those trunks, you know, they're missing this or that. I'm just not that good. I don't know if I just don't have the memory capacity or what, but uh, as long as it's somewhere in, in line with it, and as long as it looks good at the end of the day, that's all I really care about. And you guys can be different. If you are, uh, leave me a note in the comments. I'm sure there's some people out there that say, oh, this is totally inaccurate. I'm not going to buy it. And, you know, that's your right. And that's why I always say vote for your with your wallet. That's what you got to do at the end of the day. 
Um, I did mention, I think, in the Luchasaurus one, and maybe I didn't mention the other ones. I would like to see the figures instead of the actual pictures of it. It's very McFarlane-esque, where I'd rather see, uh, I'd rather see the character uh, as the figure portrays than the actual person. And McFarlane does the same thing, but they do it with the comic book pictures. I'd rather see the figure. Maybe that's me. I don't know. But I do appreciate a checklist, at least, so you know who's in the set, so you, you'll understand who you're looking for. So a little discussion there. Soaking it in, my first impressions, looks very good. He's got two extra sets of hands. He's got the open grip hands. And then he's got even like the Luchasaurus jungle hands. Like you're combing through the jungle. Like young Rakondo in G.I. Joe. or deep G.I. Joe reference for you. Uh, but very cool. I like the spiky looking knee pads on him. And uh, I like the boots. So very interesting. Very interesting in here. Let's open it up. Let's see what's doing. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what all the fuss is about, as a wise man once said. Pull them open. But you guys know I have a min-on card set here, so I'm not too worried. But Series 5 may be my final min-on card set, so we'll see where that goes. See you later. Plastic prison time. There he is. Old Jungle Boy. Ready to swing through the trees. And there it is. All right, let's get the hands out here. Pop those out first. And then we'll pop him out. See you later up high. There it is. All right, once again, now here we go. Now, this could be something interesting, and maybe he is a small figure. This could be the smallest. Ray Phoenix might be there with him, but one of the smallest figures we've gotten in the Jazzwares line so far. But first thing I notice is the elbows don't have that wobbly disease like Luchasaurus, where you can just break that elbow off if you gave it any little pressure. Obviously, you could do the same here, but it's nowhere near as bad on this one. So fingers crossed the rest of the unboxings. Maybe Luchasaurus is the last bad one, but that's really been my only gripe on the figures so far for AEW. I love the paint apps. I love the everything. Obviously, first series, uh, you got to take that one out. They're working out some kinks. They've replaced those. Hopefully, I get those soon. I was in the first orders ringside. Where's mine? I'm sure it'll come soon. I mean, like I said, I did pick this up at ringside collectibles. Use discount code Kyle. Save 10%. But the elbows on this one are good. That's long story short. I love that. Uh, we talked about in other videos, AEW figures do not fit on the ringside collectible stand, so we won't do the ringside collectibles uh, stand test on this one. So you got, yeah, so we got the all the uh, articulation we've seen with these AEW figures, all the stuff we're used to. I really like these knee pads. Uh, they almost, I don't know. I mean, they're plasticky, but they're way more durable than your typical Mattel ones, uh, I guess, for example, or even Jack's back in the day. They've got some pliability to them, so that is very cool. His expression, I'm not sure what to think. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get a lot more Jungle Boys. we got a two-pack coming out very soon, but we'll get more. Uh, he's got a very serious look on his face here. Almost too serious. I, I don't want him crazy smiling. I don't want him crazy frowning. So this is somewhere in between. I guess it's fine. I would like to have more of a smiling face, I guess, next time. Or at least maybe a smirk or something. As He looks like he's a little, a little uh, mad. He looks a little angry. I don't know. I do like the long hair on him. They got a really good hair sculpt here. This hair looks phenomenal, especially in the back. I don't know if we've seen that good a detail on hair on a wrestling figure in a long time. They went all out here. But like I said, this is a very, very small figure, especially when you notice in the abdomen area. Very small, very light, uh, but goes great. It's going to go great with uh, Luchasaurus. And then getting down to the boots, I really like the tassels. Once again, it's not soft goods tassels. It's harder, molded on, and I like that actually better on this. Uh, sometimes uh, soft goods work really good on tassels and stuff like that. I remember there was a Paul London Ruthless Aggression figure. It worked for me. But then there's Ultimate Warrior Class Series, Classic Superstar Series 12. I had to hit the Rolodex. Uh, and some of the other ones. I guess most of the Classic Warriors have the soft tassels that kind of slip down. I didn't like those as much. I would have rather seen those molded on. Uh, and this one, I like molded on. Uh, you know, he, he looks very 70s hippie inspired, six, late 60s, early 70s. Hippie inspired his boots he wears to the ring. Um, but that's just me. And then you got the plainest trunks in the game, just brown trunks. There's not a whole lot to say about the trunks. Uh, is this the most Toyotic figure of all time? Not anywhere close. I mean, next to Luchasaurus, this is about as plain Jane as it gets. But you put those two together, it really does work. And I got Luchasaurus, of course, hanging out right here at the table, freshly unboxed. So you got to have Luchasaurus. Uh, a be the better figure of the two i'm taking luchasaurus right now but of course you can put him up on the shoulders i'll have to do some work he's probably oh he just took a header off the back let's see if we can do it real quick can we get him on there i mean you just got to balance it right of course i mean a, a little work it'll it'll fit i'm sure and i'll get i'll try to get it for the old glamour shots as well can i get him one last try here oh he's wanting to bend 
Yeah. But you know how it goes. You've seen it. You've seen him do it a million times. But uh, height-wise, you know, he's much shorter than Luchasaurus, like he should be. It would be terrible if he had the, you know, some of the Jax disease where they'd be the same height. That would just ruin it. So I like the scaling between these two. Uh, we talked scaling with him and Greg Colley. So I like the scaling here. Uh, it works a lot for me. So I'm okay with it. I'm happy. You can't have uh, Luchasaurus without Jungle Boy at this point. Where is Marco, Marco Stunt? I get it. He's the smallest member. He'll probably be the smallest AEW figure we ever get. So I'm excited for that day that we get uh, Marco Stunt. Is you really need him to complete the three, but you definitely need the primary two. And we've said it before on the channel, I like it when you get tag teams in the same series. Don't give me Luchasaur Luchasaurus in Series 5, Jungle Boy in Series 6. Put them together. Let's complete that tag team right off the bat. That's the way I like it. They did it with Santana and Ortiz as well. They're doing it in this series with Scorpio Sky and uh, Frankie Kazarian. So I like that a lot. I think that's the way to do it. Uh, so Jazzwares firing on all cylinders. As we always say, they're making everybody's ship rise. When you get more competition, it makes all the competition better. It truly is the golden era for action figures, including wrestling figures that we're living in right now. We're very lucky. We all got to take that step back and say, you know, I go back to when I was a kid. There was LJNs was your only option. You thought they were the greatest thing ever, but you didn't know any different. And uh, there's kids right now that have amazing options. And... Uh, adult collectors as well of course so there it is jungle boy aew unrivaled series five welcome everyone kyle here and welcome back to the channel as we continue our aew unrivaled jazzwares series five unboxings and review with frankie kazarian and remember for all your aew wwe and a lot more hit up ringsidecollectibles.com use the discount code kyle Save yourself 10%. But Frankie Kazarian, a stalwart of wrestling over the last 20 plus years at this point. Uh, one of the founding fathers I always think of of the old TNA days. Uh, when I think of TNA, he's in the mix for my top you know, 5, 10 guys I think of when I think TNA. And a little bit underrated, I would say, after all these years. And very happy to get him in this line. As we got SCU, we've got uh, Scorpio Sky. We still got to get Christopher Daniels. I got to think he'll be coming in one of the later sets very soon. But it's really cool to get Frankie Kazarian in his AEW persona, I guess we'll call it, with tag team title. And this is not Frankie Kazarian's first figure. Scorpio Sky it was. Frankie Kazarian has had a Jax TNA figure in the past. And we'll take a look at that later on uh, as we get through this. But we're going to do it like we normally do it. We're going to talk about the packaging, look at the packaging, unbox it, take a look at it, talk about it, and see where it goes from there. So let's look at the packaging first on Frankie Kazarian. Good heavy metal brother, Frankie Kazarian, as most of you guys know, he loves himself some heavy metal, so he's a good guy in my heart, any guy that loves heavy metal. I used to love when we'd wear those heavy metal vests to the ring and stuff, he needs to get back to that, that's the way to be. But there he is, he's got his jacket on to match Scorpio Sky, of course, uh, got the tag team title with him in there, got the old glamour shot down below, Unrivaled here, AEW Unrivaled up there, classic superstars inspired packaging as we always talk about. Number 39, and of course, like we said, Series 5, AEW graphics there. All Elite Wrestling here on the side. And gold foil around, of course. And there he is on the back, showing his title belt off, just like Scorpio Sky did. You got the whole cast of characters from Unrivaled Series 5 down below. And what does this represent? This represents Dynamite 1030 2019, Charleston, West Virginia. Watch All Elite Dynamite, it says down here. And then, of course, we get the autograph that we're used to getting uh, on these figures. So taking a look at it, everything looks pretty good to me. I, I do feel like they made him look a little older in the face than he actually is. Maybe that's just me. Uh, it just looks a little bit out there. He, he looks almost like Sakuraba, if you guys know Sakuraba. Almost kind of has that beaten face that Sakuraba has, it, it kind of looks like. Uh, I'm guessing it's the same type, kind of jacket that we got with Scorpio Sky, the same type of material, but we'll see when we get this unboxed. So without further ado, let's unbox it. Let's see how bad I can tear this packaging up. It seems to be uh, coming apart in pieces on these unboxings. Look at this. I'm just like a rookie. See you later. Just, I don't know. How many, how many boxes have I opened up in my life? See you later. Goodbye. And it's just I can't get these. See you later. Ah, it's part of the fun, right? Part of the charm. There's the old plastic prison on old Frankie Kazarian. Looking only like he could look, as some might say. I love the title belt. I like that title belt very much. I think it's a good looking one. Pop it out. Very for form fitting plastic. Uh, as you guys know, Jazzwares does not use twist ties in their figures. At least we haven't got any yet. Uh, they form fit perfectly to these uh, plastic prisons. So kudos. 
Oh, popped him out. See you later up high. There it goes. All right, what do we got here? I don't see too many. There's one little black dot on his face. Straighten him out a little bit. Looks good. He's got the plastic down around his waist as well, just like Scorpio Sky had. Very cool jacket on this one on the back. It says, this is the worst town I've ever been to, which obviously one of their catchphrases. No extra hands with this one. No extra hands with Scorpio Sky either. Uh, I like this jacket, but I don't like this jacket. You know, uh, it's really, I love the way it looks just displayed like this, but it reminds me of, you know, the Brian Kendrick Mattel uh, ringside exclusive back in the day. They're, they're stuck in this pose. The arms don't go up. The arms don't go down. Uh, Kyrie Sane was one of the best ones uh, we ever got, and that was Mattel Elite, of course. I love how they had the hard jacket like this, but then there was articulation in the jacket. I wish that we would get that from AEW Jazzwares. Uh, this just doesn't do anything. You can't go anywhere with it. It's really stuck in place. Uh, it's great for on, on a shelf, and that's where it'll eventually it'll be. Uh, but if you're a kid playing, it, it takes some work to get these kind of jackets off and on your characters. And sometimes I think you're saying, hey, can I ever get this back on? Uh, that's probably going to be me here. Can I get this jacket off of him without breaking the figure? What is the secret to getting this on and off? Jesus, this is just, and then it goes, fall apart at the waist trying to get it. There's the plastic piece that comes in there to protect. But man, is this hard to get off. I don't even know how. Oh my gosh. You shouldn't have to work this hard on these jackets. Maybe that's me. I should have took the hand off first, I think. It was probably my mistake, but it looks like I got it finally. Come on. Come on. You know, once I put this jacket on, I'm never taking it back off. I can tell you that much. It's just too much work. It's almost worth buying two of them just so you don't have to do this. Put it back together here. So he does match a uh, gear coloring at least. Has Rebel on the side, Kaz on the back, SCU on the side. On the front, he's got that Metallica, very uh, load, reload period if you're familiar with 90s Metallica. A lot of people absolutely hate 90s Metallica. Uh, obviously, I think Kazarian is a big fan. He's got that kind of Chinese star type thing going on on his trunks based on the Metallica artwork from the 90s. I didn't mind load and reload. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Most people didn't like it. I thought they were okay. I, I was a, a early teenager when those came out. I remember being pretty heartbroken about the Black Album, though. Uh, I had gotten into them right as Justice and Justice for All came out. I loved and Justice for All, and then I went back and heard the other ones. Uh, Kill 'Em All is still my favorite Metallica album to this day. Kill 'Em All was just a groundbreaking. I loved. I played that so much as a kid. And then all the way to Injustice for All. And then the Black Album came out, which everybody loves the Black Album. I was not a real big fan. Inner Sandman I liked from the get-go. I love it even more with the Sandman wrestling connection. But the rest of that album, it just did not do anything for me. Uh, I was just like, ugh. You know, I was the only one that knew about Metallica. Now everybody loves them. Everybody loves all these songs. It Truly uh, not what I was looking for at the time. I, I got it, of course, and I listened to it. But I haven't listened to that album in a long, long time. But Load and Reload, I actually enjoyed, so I don't know what, what I based anything on. But give me your Metallica thoughts in the comments. Uh, but Frankie Kazarian, like I said, he does have a little bit of a beat-up face look to him. It looks like Sakuraba is what it reminds me of, uh, for those of you that know him. But very good kick pads, very a very clean figure. I don't see any paint blemishes. I don't see any issues there. Uh, the jacket is really cool, but man, way too hard to get on and off. I, I don't like the challenge of this. I don't like the fight. He is not slimy like Scorpio Sky, if you remember that review. He had a bit of a, a, a shimmering slime, like an oil-based slime to him. We don't get that with Kazarian. We get the same exact title belt we got with Scorpio Sky, of course. So that's cool. But I like this one. I like to get a Frankie Kazarian figure. Uh, you know, it's one of the guys that's been around for a long, long time that has not had very many figures made of him. So kudos to Frankie Kazarian getting another figure. He totally deserves it. Anytime a good metal brother gets a figure, we're all in on that. As you guys know, ringside collectible stands do not fit on this. Uh, hopefully they got Jazzwear stands coming soon, hopefully. Uh, let's compare this one, though. We'll stand him right there. How about the old TNA Deluxe Impact Frankie Kazarian? Uh, an okay figure. I mean, it looks like him a heck of a lot more cartoony, but that's how the Jax figures, especially the Deluxe Jax figures were. They were a lot more cartoony, but he's got the same Metallica little logo on his tights here. Got kind of the Ride the Lightning Kaz logo on the back here. Uh, towers over this one. Doesn't look realistic. You know, like I said, it's more cartoony. But that's the style. That's what we got. You got to take take your hat off, uh, your business hat on, and say this is back, you know, a long time ago. This is before newer technologies and stuff. So it does have a little bit of a charm to it. 
especially being his first uh, traditional real figure. Got Scorpio Sky standing right here. Put the SCU boys together. Put them in the middle. We'll put them in the middle together. I uh, just need Christopher Daniels. I got to think, like I said, Christopher Daniels has to be coming very soon. Uh, same elbow issues, but not as bad as Luchasaurus. I think the smaller the guy's arms, the better the elbow joints work. It's still a little bit of an issue, but nowhere near as bad as, like I said, Luchasaurus and some of the bigger figures in the AEW line. So that's the watch out. Watch out on the elbows. Watch out on that stuff. But cool to have SCU together. Tag team champions in the same set. You got to like that. Now you got tag titles you can move without your uh, fed or your, your displays, stuff like that. So a lot to like about these two. Definitely got to pick up Kazarian. Like I said, any time we get a heavy metal brother with a figure, we got to support that. And hopefully we get more Kazarians in the future. We'll see now that SCU is no more. Where does Scorpio Sky go? Where does Kazarian go? Where does Christopher Daniels go? Hopefully we get Daniels to complete that, just like Marco Stunt to complete Luchasaurus. Uh, Luchasaurus Jurassic Express. I got to think we'll get all these things. I think there's going to be a lot of AEW figures to come. We're seeing all these pre-order listings everything else. So I have no doubt we'll get probably everybody, just like the old Jax days, um, so just stay tuned. So there it is, Frankie Kazarian. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel as we continue unboxing AEW Unrivaled Series 5 via Jazzwares. And today, we've got first time in the line, first traditional action figure, throw out the micro brawler, first traditional action figure of one of my personal favorites, Scorpio Sky. And remember, you get these at ringsidecollectibles.com, use discount code KYLE. Save 10%, but Scorpio Sky, partners in SCU, I guess really not anymore, but part of SCU at this time, tag team champion with Frankie Kazarian. We're going to unbox him uh, this week as well as part of AEW Unrivaled Series 5, and we'll compare his figure to his old Jax TNA figure, so be on the lookout for that. But Scorpio Sky, nothing to really compare him to, we're just going to talk about the figure, but we're going to do it like we normally do it first, we're going to take a look at the packaging. So let's look at the packaging and old Scorpio Sky. First time we've had the tag team AEW titles in the line. So really cool to see that for the first time with those guys. We've talked about the packaging before. I love the classic Superstars inspired black and gold coloring. Very good packaging look. Very cool glamour shot there. Scorpio Sky with his tag team title. Love that he comes with a jacket. We'll see uh, more about that when we unbox the figure. But everything looks good in the package there with the title belt, the jacket, the figure. Got all elite wrestling on the side here. What number are we? Number 38 in the line would be Scorpio Sky, Series 5. And all Elite Wrestling on this side as well. Bottom, nothing really too fun there. Nothing really that we're interested in at all. And then there's the back of the package here. You got Scorpio Sky's autograph. You got him holding up those tag team titles. You got the rest of the line down below. AEW Unrivaled Series 5 from Jazzwares. Let's see what it says on the back. Not a whole lot. Dynamite, 10-30-2019, Charleston, West Virginia. Watch All Elite Wrestling Dynamite. Check your local listings. Once again, I think we've talked about it uh, many a times with many a different lines. I'd like a little blurb here. It shows what it's from, but say, hey, this is the night SCU won the tag team titles, or whatever it depicts. Uh, I wish there was a little bit of a blurb there. Just something. Something small, something little. That would go a long ways. And Maybe I'm the only one screaming about that. Maybe I need to drop my hang-ups. But that's what I see, and I'll give you my opinions when I'm open this. And that's uh, the way I see it. So there you go. All right, let's get old Scorpio Sky open. Jeez. Very hard to open. I do appreciate how hard these are to open. I like that uh, you don't see a lot of figure swaps with the AEW figures. Yes, I know you can do it carefully. You can make it happen. But traditionally, these are a lot harder to make look good in a figure swap compared to your Mattel Elites. Uh, there's no denying that. So uh, it is what it is. But these always, see you later, see you late, see you later, get out of here. Get this unboxed. It's always a mess. Look at this. I'm like a rookie. This is rookie. See you later. Rookie stuff. I'll get it. There it is. See you later. Up high. There it goes. All right. Scorpio Sky. Looking only like he can look, as one may say. Maybe that person was me. A little bit of grease to the packaging here. I don't know what's going on there. We got not quite Jack Sticky disease, but we got some... Some grease, some plastic going on. Here's the old plastic prison for Scorpio Sky. There he is. Belt comes on him, which is always interesting. Pop him out. Maybe I'll pop him out. All right. There it is. See you later. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a, a grease to him. 
just like he's been slimy. He's been lubed up. I don't know if he's getting ready to go on the slip and slide in the backyard, so he lubed himself up with some butter, maybe. Not exactly sure what's going on there, but uh, that's the way he is. We got some issues here, though. And I noticed it in the package as well. I got two of these. As you guys know, I've been collecting mint on card set and an opener set. I look at both of them. Okay, which one's more mint for my mint on card? Which one's more damaged? The packaging on this one was a little more damaged. Both ankles on this one, on the one and the one I kept mint on card, are just kind of bowed out a little bit. Not terrible. It, it flex in a little bit. And I think you could probably heat it up with hot water or a hair dryer on low. That could be fixed. Oh, we got a little rubber band around the the waist here we got a lot going on here we got what are we doing okay we'll get to it we'll get to it when we get this jacket off but yeah he does have like a slime to him i don't understand what that's about it reminds me if you guys uh watched my unboxing i think it was masters of the wwe universe undertaker uh he had that kind of glow in the dark slime to him he's got a little of that too some of that shine he's a very shiny figure got a little bit of uh almost looks like glue blemishes he's got one on his Shoulder here and one right on the top of his head as well. Besides that, everything looks okay. He does have plastic wrap around his waist, so that's interesting. Uh, it looks like the jacket is removable. I figured it would be. Uh, it is not cloth. It is not soft goods. It's a hard, hard vinyl. It's not the uh, poly pocket, bubbly, kind of squishy Mattel we're used to. This is very hard, very form-fitting to him, uh, which is nice. It says, Daniels Kazarian Sky. The Pride of the West, SCU, and a California on the back. So that's that's a little decoration on the uh, hoodie he's got here. No paint application issues on the S's on the side of his legs. Uh, how about the elbows? Now, the elbows are totally covered by his uh, elbow pads. Hey, there you go. B believe you me, the elbow pads. So I don't know. It does feel loose, though. It feels like these elbows, I just they need to tighten that up. They need to work on that a little bit. Let me pull this hoodie off of him, see what we're really dealing with here. This hoodie is very, I think you got to basically pull his head off. Maybe. There it is. How do I get this hoodie off exactly? I think you got to pull the arms off, or at least one arm, it looks like, it feels like. I think I'm going to have to. I think I'm going to have to yank an arm off. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know how I'm going to get this hoodie off. I don't want to break anything, of course, but sometimes, sometimes you got to crack a few eggs, as you guys know, but... He's so slimy, I can't even get his arm off. It's ridiculous. What are we doing here? Pull the waist off. So there's that plastic that was around his waist, so that pops right off. And that's slimy, too. So a very slimy figure, old Scorpio Sky. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what we're doing. Can I get this off? And if I get it off, will it ever go back on? That's the other question. I might have to buy two Scorpio Skies. Just arm doesn't want to come off. Can't get the head through. We're going to just dismantle this figure. We'll get it. We're going to get it. Maybe. We're going to have to get the hair dryer out. Holy cow, this thing is in. All right, so we're having a rough go here. I, his hands are so, arm is so slippery, I can't even get his arm off. This is, this is next level. Now I'm all greasy. All right, well, Scorpio Sky, you don't want to, you don't want to play the game with me. I don't know. One last try here. Nope. I'm not going to do it. I'm pulling off his elbows. I'm going to break his elbow off, too. So a little bit of issues with this one. Man, it is so slimy. Were your guys this slimy? You guys got this issue with Scorpio Sky, or is it just me? I got to think they're all this way. So I don't know. All right. Well, I'm going to take this offline. I'm going to try to heat this up so I can get this off, see what he looks like without his hoodie on. All right, and we're back in business. So I finally got it off. I mean... Part of it was the stickiness and the sliminess of the figure. It's a very interesting one. I don't think we've had an AEW figure that was this slimy. Uh, very strange. Some glue marks, like I said, on his shoulder. Glue marks on his head. A little pain issue on the bicep there. So quality control-wise, this is maybe one of the worst figures I've had in a while, personally. But taking the quality out of it, it's still a very good-looking figure. I'm happy to have Scorpio Sky. Like I said at the top, one of my favorite performers in AEW. Uh, I do like this one. I don't know. His head and shoulders, I don't know if the head feels like it needs to be back a little bit more. Something's just a little bit off with the proportion right in the head and throat and neck area to me. It's not terrible. I'm sure if you tilt his head and do it just right, you can get it. But that is one thing I noticed right away. Also, like I said, the ankle 
uh, boot a little bit needs a little heated up as it's a little warped. I don't know. Both of them were that way, the one I had in package as well. Uh, so a few issues on this one that's going to hurt its final score, I have a feeling. But I still do like this one, all being said. And I'm sure your mileage may vary. You might not have the glue spots and stuff like that on yours. Uh, I don't know. I'll be really interested to see if anybody else is slimy, though. Mine, It's not like a wet slime. It's just very slick. It's like he was greased up. Uh, we talked about the hoodie. Very hard to remove, as you guys saw me fight with it for a little bit. But I finally did get that off. And then we got to mention the belts on this one, too. Very cool to get a belt. Uh, traditional belt, just like a Mattel, I guess is what you compare it to. It just clips right in. But a little easier clasp system on this one compared to the Mattel. Some of those Mattel ones, it seems like they you got to fight with them and work them a while. This one clips right in. Uh, very clear. You can read that it's the world champion, AEW, it says. Very clear, very easy to read. Some belts, you know, especially go back to the old Jack's Ruthless Aggression belts. You can't even hardly read those things. Uh, this one you can read very clear. So it's cool to get the tag team titles in there. I'm happy with that. I'm happy to get a Scorpio Sky. Uh, take the quality control issues out of this one. I still like this one a whole lot. Not going to be at the top of my list, but a strong showing for his first figure. I'm sure if we get other figures, it'll be uh, more geared to what he's doing now with Ethan Page. As uh, SCU seems to be old hat with him at this point. As we've seen uh, on Dynamite uh, lately this week, actually, they uh, broke up SCU because they lost. So there you have it. But happy to have Scorpio Sky. You tell me your thoughts in the comments. But here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, the Scorpio Sky. Welcome, everyone. Kyle here. And welcome back to the channel as we continue our unboxings of AEW Unrivaled Series 5 from Jazzwares. And today we've got a return visitor to the lineup Adam Hangman Page. And remember, ringsidecollectibles.com. Use discount code KYLE. Save 10% on this and a whole lot more. So we're going to do it like we normally do it. Taking a look at the packaging. Unbox it. Take a look at it. We'll compare it to the old Adam Hangman Page. And we might as well look at his horse, too, while we're at it. So let's look at the packaging first. There's old Hangman right there. Looking only like he can look. Looking like he stepped out of a Western. He's got that bandana around his face. He's either going to mix up the strongest batch of Kool-Aid you've ever had, or he's going to rob a bank, one or the other. Maybe both, if the day is long enough. We'll see. But classic superstars inspired packaging, as we always say, on rival logos down here. AEW on top. A little glamour shot without the bandana on the side there. Number 40 in the line is Adam Hangman Page. AEW logo there. All Elite Wrestling on this side. And then we get to the back. We got a little glamour shot of him walking down the aisle like an old bandito, ready to go, ready to fight the good fight in the ring. So there he is. And then you got the rest of AEW Unrivaled Series 5 down below. Let's see what it says. It's got his autograph here. Adam Hangman Page, a very good autograph. Uh, All Out 9-5-2020, Jacksonville, Florida. Adam Hangman Page. He's even got the bandana that says his name on it. I didn't realize that, so that's a nice little touch. Drinking this one in, first impressions, I don't see any pain issues on this one. We'll see when we get it out of the pack. does come with an extra hand. Comes with this Kool-Aid jug and a little glass there. You never know what he might be drinking. He's going to whip up something. It is Kool-Aid season. Kool-Aid season is upon us in the grocery industry. Uh, many, many moons ago, uh, when Kyle was an employee of Kraft Foods, uh, Kool-Aid was a big deal summertime. So, let you know. All right, let's unbox it. Let's see what's going on with the old hangman. Can I get him open? There it is. How many pieces will he break into here? Oh, there we go. See you later. All right. Getting it here and see you later up high. Only two this time. How about that? So, yeah, I got the extra hand, got the drink glass, and you got the uh, pitcher right there. Adam Hangman Page looking only like he can look, as some would say. So there he is in the old plastic prison. Let's break him out. Let's break him out see what's going on here. Oh, I just lost the pitcher. We'll have to fish that out in a second. Almost lost the glass, too, but we lost the pitcher. We'll find it. We'll find it. See you later up high. Oh, he does got the old plastic around his waist as well. Uh, we're getting really accustomed to that with every single figure. Sometimes they're easier to get off than others, and this one's going to fight me with the belt placement behind it. Come on. Come on. There it is. Getting in there. You got to get in there to get these plastic off. I know they said, I believe, I don't know if it's the next series that we'll see those be a little smaller, the plastic. I don't know. All right, let's drink him in here, get him all situated. Oh, my gosh, this elbow is about ready to break off. This is the worst one I have ever seen. 
It is definitely hanging on by a thread, so I'm not going to be able to pose this one a whole lot. I don't know if that comes in, but that is just... they got to fix this issue. These figures are great. There's a few flaws like everybody else, but this is just an absolute mess. If I push just a little bit of pressure on here, it would snap this arm right off. So I don't like seeing that. There's got to be a way to fix that. Yeah, that's not a good look. And then if you look at it from the elbow, I mean, you can see how frailed out that is. That's just ready to fall. I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. Uh, I, first thing I noticed, too, after that, I see he doesn't have his traditional clown shoes that he had in the past. Before, you guys know he had those big Frankenstein boots. He does not have those on this time. Uh, does got his uh, elbow pad here on this arm. He's got his bandito mask. That comes off, I'm assuming. I don't know if you got to pull the head off, it looks like. Yeah, you do. It goes all the way around. So you got to pull the head off. So I'll, I'll pull that off in a second. From below, he's got even tassels down here molded in. I love the Wayla Jennings uh, uh, Telecaster-inspired insignias uh, graphics on his pants. You guys know we love old Wayland Jennings on the channel. Got a little horse action there on the side. I like that as well. Got one little white paint flake that seems to rub off in his hair, so that's all right. It's obviously from the body, but boy, this elbow, this worries me. This thing is going to break off if I'm not too... If I'm uh, not careful. Oh, the waist came off, but I can't get the head off. There it is. Put that waist back on. It is cool how easy these are to move around and move and shake and stuff like that. It is a neat feature, I gotta admit. Pop this head back on. There it is. You hear that pop? Oof. There's a reason he had the mask on, I think, on this one. He has got a very glossy beard. Very glossy beard. I don't know what to think about that. That's a little too glossy. It almost looks like he's got a little little bit of lipstick on as well. So that's a little, a little interesting. He looks a lot like Diamond Dallas Page, a younger Diamond Dallas Page kind of in this figure, which is interesting as well. well let's compare him, though. You know he doesn't fit on a ringside collectible stand. We're not going to be that lucky with that uh, this go around. But let's see how he looks right next to this. So the new one is taller than the old one by a hair. But the feet have shrunk in size. I mean, that is... I'm glad they corrected this foot issue. I mean, it looks way better on this new one. This new one's really good. But once again, it's the head and the color tone. So, a lot like John Moxley in this line as well. I've noticed that as well. So, that the head swap you could do, but the, the tones will not match. The skin tones will not match at all. I don't know which one I like better. I think I like the body and everything on this one, new one, better. The head is better on this one, but you can't mix and match these because of the skin tone issues. So I don't know if they figured out their skin tone. I thought Series 4, this is how they were going to look. I thought as a whole they looked very well in Series 4. They looked really good. Looked uh, outstanding, actually. The Kenny Omega and some of those other ones. But then you get to Series 5, they almost have a, a jaundice, a little zombiness to them. So they're trying to work through that. I hope they can find a skin tone and kind of stick to it. Would be uh, ideal, I think, at this point. Um, so I don't know. It takes away a little bit on this hangman for me. Uh, I just, I don't know. He does, obviously, uh, you can put this glass in his hand. I like that. Maybe it maybe it fits in his hand. I, maybe I spoke too soon. There it is. Fits like a glove in his hand. I like that. Hold on a second. Let me stop the video. Let me go find that picture somewhere. All right, we're back. I found the picture. There it is. Just a picture. I guess they probably didn't want to market beer bottles. I mean, they could have made them soda bottles or something like that, I would think. But uh, beer bottles they did not want uh, for kids, I'm sure, in the toy aisle. I'm sure that wouldn't fly. So we'll have to do with a, a nice picture of margaritas or Kool-Aid, most likely, uh, with the Adam Hangman Page figure. A solid figure, but like I said, paint issues, it seems like. So some of the coloring issues, just a little zombified for my liking. And then the elbow is the worst. And of all the ones I've complained about after these series, this one has the biggest issues, at least on mine. I'd be curious, though. Tell me on yours, do you got that same left elbow? Is it very, very loose on this one, or is it just luck on the draw, depending on how that goes? You tell me in the comments. But then, let's take a look at this. I got this horse... A horse is a horse, of course, of course, what Mr. Ed used to tell me. I used to love Mr. Ed as a kid. I watched a lot of Mr. Ed uh, reruns. Uh, but this is a royal breed horse. Uh, what is this? An Arabian Arabian stallion. Height, five feet. Color, solid. Uses, saddleback. Origin, Middle East. So we're going to dabble. We're going to see if this works with Adam Hangman Page. 
It's got a little too much hair on it. I get it. This isn't for wrestling figures. This is for little kids probably to play with. And most most likely maybe girls out there because it comes with a brush and all that kind of fun stuff. I'm sure a little boy could do it. Uh, wouldn't be for me as a little boy, but we'll see. We'll see what this horse is all about here. Going to crack it open. Nope, there it is. All right, horse. All right, Mr. Ed, see you later up high. Oh, knocking stuff over. Got to get the brush out. There you go. Look at that brush. Beautiful. Maybe a, a beard comb. I'm going to comb myself up here. You, you never know. All right, see you later. Get out of here. Oh, just beautiful hair on here. It's almost like like real hair. What is this? What is this around the hair? What is this? Anybody you guys collect horses? Anybody buy horses out there? Not me. I think this is the first horse purchase I've ever had for myself. I know my dad as a kid. Uh, you know, country western, uh, you know, cowboy toys were all the rage back in my dad's day when he was a kid collecting. So I'm sure he's had some of these in the past. I don't know about the hair on there. So we got that off there. Oh, we're locked in here. We got something going on. It's probably locking the saddle in. There it is. Goodbye. All right, but the hangman, you know he needs a horse, and I got to think, knowing uh, Jeremy Padauer, Jazzwares, Jax, uh, knowing your past will lead you to your future, and I got to believe we will eventually get a horse for Adam Page in the AEW line. I, I just see that eventually coming, but no stands, no nothing. But yeah, here's this horse, an Arabian Stallion. I don't know my horses. I'm not even sure if I've ever ridden a horse in my life. Maybe I have. I had to have, right? I don't know. But let's see. Let's see how well he fits on. We'll take uh, his fun time stuff off. We'll, whoa, knocking this horse over. You know what? That doesn't look too bad, I don't think. You know, the Punisher motorcycle goes with the Undertaker and an Arabian horse goes with Adam Page. That's actually solid. I think that is very solid. What do you guys think? If I get this horse to stand, I might have to put some a sticky tack or some museum glue down. Uh, but I think this looks okay. Look at that there. It's just gallop. All right. Doesn't want to sit on that one. Let's try the old Frankenstein shoes, Adam Hangman Page. Maybe that one would be better on here. He's got bigger base with those Frankenstein shoes. We'll see how this works here. We might have to do a little bit of work to get this going, but there he is. Jogging along. I think the other one actually looks better with his uh, more zombie-type skin color. But that's all right. I mean, I've definitely seen worse. That's pretty close to scale, actually. It's giving you the old, hey, partner. Hey, partner. Boom, boom. Bang, bang. You know, one of those deals. But that's all right. I don't know. Any thoughts, you guys out there? Anybody you guys try to horse? I think this is good enough. It's just got to get the weight just right. There we go. Off to the side. So an interesting dynamic here. I worry about this arm breaking off on me, unfortunately. I will definitely be using the uh, bandana around the face. He will be displayed that way, as I am not a fan of this head sculpt. This is probably my least favorite head sculpt in Series 5, actually. But the body and the uh, Western gear, the Wayland Jennings-inspired Western gear, uh, I'm all in. I'm all in on this. Uh, the skin tone, a little rough. Uh, but the head face scan just misses for me. But maybe that's why they gave him the bandana. They said, I don't know he's going to be looking at his face anyways. Um, but another okay This is an okay offering. This is not going to be, this isn't Luchasaurus. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's not quite Luchasaurus levels. But I like this one. It'll be interesting uh, to, if we get a head tone to match in a later series and I can pop that on. Uh, I want the true, definite Adam Page figure. This one had the big Frankenstein boots. This one's got a rough head scan. Maybe the next one we can somehow cobble together the perfect Adam Page. Only time will tell, but what say you? You tell me in the comments. Uh, but not too bad, not too bad. AEW Series 5, Adam Page. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel. As today on the channel, we're unboxing AEW Unrivaled Series 5 via Jazzwares, John Moxley. Returning to the line once again with his title belt, no longer has that belt, but he does in this figure, so good for him. And we'll just uh, always be remembered that he was once upon a time a champion. So John Moxley, a very popular character, obviously, and no stranger to toys uh, as far as AEW wrestlers go. Outside of maybe, probably Jericho has the most of all AEW wrestlers when you think of their entire career. But Moxley, he's right up there. As we got a plethora of Dean Ambrose figures back in the day between the Elite line, the Basic line, and even exclusives. 
Uh, so he's no mystery for the figure game, but he might be a mystery to me. We'll see what we think when we unbox him, talk about it, and uh, see where it goes from there. So here it is. Jazzwear Series 5, John Moxley, returning to the line. To me, I would have rather had somebody else. I think a lot of other people would have had somebody else in the line. But I don't hate this. We always say we got to put our business hat on. We got to take that step back. You got to have some of the hottest characters. You got to have Cody, as much as people don't like it. You got to have Moxley. You got to have Jericho. You got to have those guys on the pegs, as that's what the kids are going to want, just like the John Cena's, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns. Uh, in the elite side of the fence. So I understand it. It's not for me. These aren't always going to be for me. But this Moxley's all right. We'll compare it to the previous Moxley, see which one we like better, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. But let's look at the packaging first, like we said. Classic Superstars-inspired packaging. You can see him in there. He's got the belt around his... Uh, over his shoulder, I guess we should say. To me, the arms, the first thing I noticed, the arms look a little tad small uh, for the figure. Maybe that's just me. We'll see when we unbox it. But that's my first impression. We got the glamour shot down below, unrivaled line as well. Then you got the side, all elite wrestling. A little glamour shot there of old John Moxley. Number 37. Yep, 37. Series 5, like we said. And then you got the side there with the AEW logo. And then, of course, the back. There he is, holding the title belt high for everyone to see. You got the rest of the Unrivaled Series 5 lineup there. And uh, where is this from? Let's see what it says here. From All Out, 9-5-2020, Jacksonville, Florida. And then he's got his little Mox signature. Very small, not a lot to that signature. I know he gets a little bit of a complaints out there that his signature isn't big enough and fancy enough. Same with Dean Ambrose. I think he used to just sign a DA. I'm not a big autograph guy. Outside of Terry Funk and some of the ones, Ultimate Warriors and stuff like that, I don't really need any autographs, so it's not that big a deal to me. But uh, I know some people would like him to have a more professional autograph. So there you go. All right, let's see how many pieces I can open this up into. There's one. See you later. Oh, didn't get very far like a boomerang. See you later. Let's go. Let's go. Can we get it? Oh, see you later. What a mess. What a mess down here. This is just horrible horrible there it is big one see you later up high and now we get some plastic prison action he's mean mugging his arms do look small though i love the black yellow and kind of grayish white splatter paint pants though that's a pretty cool feature there he is the old plastic prison drink him in everybody all right let's knock him out there it is that belt Oh, you got to make sure you go the right way. You'll rip the belt plate off. So there's that. See you later. See you later. See you later. Later. Oh, my belt's a little twisted here, as you can see. Look at that. I've never seen that before. A little heat or whatever, that'll fix that. I bet you if I clamp it together, it'll slowly start to come back. Maybe. Hopefully. These clamp a lot easier together on first try than the Mattel ones do. Um, just the peg system's a little bit better is what it is though AEW title we've seen it before with moxley i'm sure it's the exact same thing we'll compare it in a little bit so i'll stick that off to the side now let's look at the figure let's drink this figure in yeah i don't know something about the arms look a little too skinny and we're talking about the forearms and the hands it just look a little small compared to the rest of the size we've got that uh plastic i almost said dreaded plastic i don't know if i dread the plastic but you got to make sure you get it off the figure let's see can i get it off Slowly ripping it. There it is. So I do appreciate that. They protect the figure. That's, I guess, from the belt and the coat and the jacket and everything else. Yeah, I mean, it's a solid. We know it's John Moxley. You see it in the face. It's solid. Uh, how are the wrists? And yeah, the elbows, once again, the elbows very loose. So just a little pressure, you're going to snap that off. Do got the double jointed elbows, though, and, and most of them do, which is really cool at this point. That's the way figures are going, unless you're Star Wars Black Series. They're kind of going away from the double joints. I like the double joints, but it's not a game or a deal breaker for me. You guys tell me in the comments your thoughts. Double joints are great if you're doing figure photography on a regular basis and really want to get in some dynamic poses. For somebody like me that just basically poses them on a shelf and stands there on a shelf, 
I don't need uh, double jointed knees and elbows. I much prefer double jointed knees and elbows in Marvel Legends type figures because I do display them in a, a scene in my collection where wrestlers are standing uh, behind me like they're getting ready for graduation. They're waiting to walk across the stage. They're all standing there on their best behavior. Uh, they're not doing any fancy poses behind me as, as you guys have seen in my collector's videos. And if you haven't seen the collector's video, what are you waiting for? Go watch it. It's a great video. You can take, you, take the tour of the whole collection. It'll be a great time. Uh, but like I said, I like the jeans. I like the splatter paint. Hey, this, easy for me to say. I like the splatter paint on his jeans. That really does pop. More so than his former uh, figure with the gray and black kind of acid wash, maybe. Got mocks on the back of the jacket. I do like that. As you guys know, like all these other ones, he will not fit on a ringside collectible stand. He does not have, okay, so I remember too, well, I got it right here. Might as well bust it out. Here's the old John Moxley. Same jacket probably being reused. It looks like it to me. Yeah, and, and I don't hate that. He wears this jacket still, so why wouldn't you reuse it? It's not like you need to reinvent the wheel on that one. Uh, I will notice, or I do notice, he does not have the scar on his head here. He's got kind of the, the mark, scar, whatever you want to call it on his head here. I like that, though. Uh, I didn't really like this at first for his first figure, but now that we have two, I like to have the options. Hey, this is battle damage John Moxley. Here's regular John Moxley. So I don't necessarily hate that. I did think the heads were going to be the exact same, but they are totally different heads, hair sculpt, everything else. It's funny. Gosh, which one do I like better? You know what? Believe it or not, I like the old ones. The skin tone in the head on this one is a lot better than the new one. A lot better. He looks... It's like they tried to tan up the skin a little too much where it almost looks like a, a pale, like he's seasick. Like he's been out uh, sailing the seven seas with shipwreck from G.I. Joe and he looks like he's about ready to puke off the side. That's how this looks. Almost looks like a little zombie-ish. I mean, if you put those two side by side, I don't know. He just looks ill. It's funny how, how drastic they look differently side by side. I think they're still trying to figure out the color tones of these figures a little bit. Uh, we all know the, the debacle Series 1 turned out to be, and there's been a lot of improvements. Uh, that Kenny Omega from Series 4, just next level. I mean, that was the biggest, vast improvement of a figure that I've ever seen from the Series 1 to that one, just next level. They've done some really good figures, and, and I think they're just trying to figure out what skin tone to go with. And it didn't quite work on this new Moxley figure, unfortunately, especially when you compare it to the last one, which I wasn't the biggest fan of the last one but now it makes me appreciate this one more if that makes any sense uh very very strange i like the face expressions and stuff on this newer one better but the coloring looks a heck of a lot better on this one um so i don't know but both paints are pretty good i think i probably like and you know that's the beauty of these figures too you can swap i could definitely just turn we could do it right now if we wanted to maybe if the head will pop off there's one you can just switch the heads on these guys too so maybe we'll see how that looks. Why not? I keep forgetting about the mix and match parts on this one. So you know what? I Yeah, I like this head better on this body. The problem we got here, though, is the skin tones don't match. The head and the body skin tones just don't match. How's this look? And see, this makes him look even sicker. Yeah, it makes him look really bad. I mean, he truly looks like a zombie. Oh, uh, he's coming to get you. Uh, uh. I mean, that's what it looks like. But I forget. I always forget about the mix and match nature. Well, I've talked about it before in the past. I'm not a mix and matcher by trade. Go back to the old G.I. Joe days. I wasn't one of those guys making my own uh, figures. But it's a really neat option here. You guys have seen on the channel before, I've made some easy customs like the Dynamite Kid uh, out of the British Bulldog and like a Bret Hart and some of those things. Uh, I can't wait till we get more AEW figures down the line. We'll be able to do a lot of that. I think we'll be able to mix and match and make some figures that uh, we didn't think we'd get, but we could make very easily. So I'm looking forward to some easy customs, but I'm not one of those guys going to buy a bunch of Moxley so I can just swap heads and bam, I got new figures with the same stuff. Uh, that's not going to work for me. That'll get expensive too in the wallet. But when the time is right, I will strike and I will make some customs, some easy swap body part customs out there. Uh, I think it'll be a pretty cool deal once we get more figures in the set. So there it is, a very the curious case of John Moxley. I don't know if we've got our defining John Moxley figure yet in the AEW line. Uh, there's been some uh, quirks and some issues with each one, from where I sit at least. Uh, but you know we're going to get a lot more of John Moxley figures. You know they're going to get it figured out. And I, for one, am excited about the future. I'm a buyer for the future too. Uh, I like to see the uh, test of time and the, and the road traveled with these AEW figures. 
So there it is, John Moxley. <laughs> All right, let's put a bow on AEW Unrivaled Series 5 and list them from my favorite to my least favorite and give a little bit of a reason why, I guess. If you watch the reviews, you probably could guess my order. It's always fun to guess what's Kyle's order going to be, but I'm sure every single 100% of you guys out there watching this, you guess number one. Luchasaurus, the crown jewel of the AEW, AEW Unrivaled line at this point, absolutely in love with this figure it checks all my boxes big figure mast face paint tattoos there's not much more i could want in a figure than this and he's big he's big he's burly an amazing amazing figure far and away number one a huge distance between one and number two and so forth and we'll talk about that but luchasaurus number one number two for me is an interesting one is i had some struggles uh, unboxing this one as you guys saw very slimy greasy a few paint defects unfortunately and the jacket is extremely hard to get off but that being said scorpio sky is a favorite of mine i love the looks of his face and the and the lightness of him the character here so they did a really fabulous job on this one so he is a bit of a sleeper here at number two for me Number three, I would say, is a sleeper as well, Jungle Boy. The plainest figure we've had probably in the AEW lineup so far. Uh, you know, obviously the partner of uh, Luchasaurus, Jurassic Express. I like it a lot. But amazing detail on the hair. The face sculpt is, uh, you know, it's in between. I guess I don't want him too smiley. I don't want him too mad. So I guess this is best circumstances after I sit and stew on it for a while. Uh, but I'd like a little bit of more emotion. And I'm sure we'll get it in future figures in the face. But a plain Jane figure, but works. This is Jungle Boy to a T. I love the extra hands with this one as well. Completes the Luchasaurus lineup. I like this a lot. So another one, a sleeper at number three. Number four would be way higher in the line for me, and that is Adam Hangman Page. For some reason, though, the head sculpt just missed its mark with me, uh, and that puts him at the number four spot because of that reason. Also a little weird on the skin tone compared to the prior Adam Page. It's an improvement over the last Adam Page figure, but the head is a little a little rough to me. Uh, I do like the extra accessories. I like the shotgun hand. Uh, I love the bandana, and with this figure... Uh, he moves way up. If you if the bandana was molded on, you couldn't see his face, he'd probably move up a spot. Uh, but since you can remove it, I guess it, it goes both ways. It's good. And like I said in the review, we will be keeping the bandana on his face because uh, he looks way better with it. And I love the Waylon Jennings-inspired uh, decorations on his uh, tights and everything else. So a very strong figure. These are all very close together. Far and away, number one, the rest are very close together. And they really could switch over time for me, too, as I get to sit with them a lot longer. Uh, second to last down here at number five spot, we got Frankie Kazarian. Just looks a little bit like uh, Sakuraba to me. I don't know if they got the head sculpt exactly the way it needed to be. Uh, I'm not sure on the Polly Pocket uh, style jacket either the jacket is a little tough i wish it had some mobility to it we mentioned that carrie sane that had the uh, joints put into it i'd like to see that in the aew line in the future And there's a lot of growth room uh, they're doing a tremendous job on these figures and every set usually gets a few a few missteps here and there but every set usually gets a little bit better and better but frankie comes in number five and then number six for me is john moxley partially it's not that different than the last one we did get an updated head here uh, but just not a lot of change here, but I get it. Like I said in the review as well, John Moxley is one of the big faces of the company. They got to put him out on a regular clip. So I understand why we got it. We got a different head sculpt. Doesn't have the scar like we got in the last one, uh, but very much looks like a zombie. Very zombie looking. I don't know what's going on with the skin tones here. It's almost like they took a step back from the last series skin tone. So they're still working through that. I hope they get a consistent skin tone color that moves on uh, from here on out. As I'm anxious to see what series six uh, holds for us. And I'll, once we get them in hand, we'll know. But series five for me, this is my lineup. This is where I'm going. But this Luchasaurus figure absolutely next level this could very well be no luchasaurus ever left behind uh he's gonna be a great gift for christmas for many a family member many a kid uh you got to get the luchasaurus i mean that's how good that figure is but an interesting lineup i don't know if i would put this lineup higher than series four in my book it's close but probably just a step below except for luchasaurus like i said my favorite figure in the AEW lineup so far 
So there you go. You guys in the comments, tell me your order. What's your order of favorites on these? I'd love to know. Tell me down below. Don't forget to like the video, of course. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're marching towards 10,000 subscribers. And when we do, we're going to have a huge giveaway and uh, some other surprises that might come along with the 10,000 subscriber milestone. So make sure you subscribe. Tell a friend. Uh, make sure they get subscribed as well. And we'll see what happens come 10,000 uh, subscribers. Uh, and also follow me on social media at SirPaul64 on Twitter, at the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on Instagram, below the collar.com, search Kyle Peterson on there. So there it is. There you have it. Another AEW Unrivaled is in the book. So for AEW Unrivaled Series 5, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.